The next person coming to the stage is a very funny man. He's originally from Boston. You might have seen him on The Tonight Show, The Letterman Show, or seen him on his uh, one-half-hour Showtime special. Please welcome to the stage Gary Goldman. Come on, let's hear it for him. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Um... You ever uh, drive by one of those things on the side of the highway that tell you how fast you're going? You know those things? Do you pay attention to them, man? I gotta be honest with you, I stopped paying attention to them when I discovered a similar gadget in my dashboard. <laughs> yeah, I don't need a second opinion. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna go with my onboard speed telling machine. Thank you very much for the heads up. Some people slow down at those things. They slam on the brakes. You don't have to slow down at those things. They're just a sign. It's just a sign. It can't chase you. <laughs> don't slow down. You think I slow down? I don't slow down. I speed up and set the high score. <laughs> a stupid invention, that is. You know what another bad invention is? The thing that puts out a candle for you. The candle snuffer. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Finally, a practical way to put out a candle. Oh, thank God. Remember the old method? <laughs> All those years of... <laughs> oh, how did we overcome it? Then there's some inventions that are good inventions, but you're like, well, where the hell has that been? The self-adhesive postage stamp? We had space shuttles before we had self-adhesive postage stamps. <laughs> space shuttle technology, self-adhesive postage stamp technology, neck and neck for a while. Space shuttles won. What, was the post office sitting on this technology? Afraid we weren't ready for it? Oh, we'd give it to them, it'd blow their minds. Let's not open up that Pandora's box. Let them lick. Then when they came out with them, they were so proud of themselves, they had a sign, a, post, a poster at the post office that said, congratulate us on our self-adhesive postage stamps. Oh, yeah, congratulations, post office. Way to invent the sticker. <laughs> yeah, we've had stickers. Every banana I've ever eaten has had a sticker on it. Took you 500 years to catch up to Chiquita. I'll tell you a good invention, the pill. The pill is a good invention, just by the fact that you know exactly which pill I'm talking about. Nobody's here like, ibuprofen? <laughs> you know, I'm talking about the birth control pill. There are billions of pills. That's the pill. There's a pill that keeps you from getting polio. That's not the pill. <laughs> this one will save your life. No, this one, you don't have to wear a condom with this one. That's, that's the pill. You won't have a baby if you wear this. Man. My cousin's having a baby. My cousin's having a baby. And much like you people, I couldn't give a shit. It's just, uh, you know what I mean? It's a cousin. It's more coincidence than it is family. To me. To me. It's like, oh, wow, we have the same grandpa. That's unbelievable. I'll see you next Thanksgiving. Okay, good. But I acted interested. I'm really good at actress, acting interested. I was like, do you know what you're going to be having? Do you know what you're going to be having? Because that's a, that they can find out what they're going to be having. And she says, no, we want to be surprised. Surprised? You're not going to be surprised. What is going to come out of there that's going to be a surprise? It's either a boy or a girl. Surpri surprise, bonsai tree. Surprise, chicken wings. Oh, my gosh. Are you as surprised as I am? No, it's either a boy or a girl. It's 50-50. 50 50-50. You ever flipped a coin and been shocked? <laughs> Gosh, so how tall am I? That's a good question. Six foot six. Yeah, yeah, that's a big Jew right there. That is a big, big Jewish guy right there. Six foot six. I don't mind when people ask me how tall I am. What I don't like is when they have follow-up questions. I want to know how tall my parents are, whether I played sports, how big my shoes are. What are you doing, a project? 
No, and the worst one is how tall are your parents? Because my dad is 5'7", my mom is 5'3", and when people find that out, they always say the same thing. They always say, how tall is the milkman? <laughs> yeah, that's funny, milkman. Yeah, uh, hmm, yeah. Uh, first of all, what year is this? Nobody here had dairy delivered in the past 500 years? No, no, but I appreciate you questioning my mom's fidelity. Yeah, hey, thanks for calling my mom a whore. I appreciate that, yeah, yeah. I just go along with this point. I'm like, yeah, my mom was with a milkman. That's her thing. That's her fetish, yeah. She only dates guys with occupations that no longer exist. That's her thing. She dated the milkman for a while. Before that, she was involved with the cobbler, the uh, chimney sweep, chim chim charu, the uh, town crier, hear ye, hear ye. She dated the blacksmith for a fortnight, only a fortnight. She even dated the muffin man. Do you know the muffin man? Yes, the muffin man on Drury Lane is where that sordid affair took place. Do you play sports? That's what people always want to know. Do I play sports? I play sports. I played football. I love football to this day. The only thing I don't understand, the cheerleaders. Are there cheers helping anybody? <laughs> Honestly? You ever see a player interviewed after the game? He's like, yeah, yeah, we were down pretty big in the fourth quarter. We were getting killed. But then the uh, cheerleaders <laughs> started chanting defense. <laughs> and that's when it dawned on me. <laughs> We ought to start playing some defense. <laughs> Coach, he huddled us up. He said, fellas, those gals are right. I'm putting in the defense. Also, they had another suggestion. I don't know if you want to take them up on it. They said you should be aggressive. They said you should be aggressive. So B-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-V-E, -E -E, aggressive. Why did they spell it? Was there one player, B-E-H? Oh, be aggressive. Okay, I thought you were saying to be egregious. I don't even know what that means. I thought you said be gregarious. I told my opponent I loved his hair. <laughs> oh my God. I thought you said be agrarian. I tried to convert the entire economy to farming despite the global dependence on high tech and fossil fuels. <laughs> Figure skating is another sport that I have a joke about. And figure skating, I, cruelest sport I know figure skating because when the women fall during their routine they make them finish skating they're like that's the lowest point in their life they're like, keep dancing sweetie keep going <laughs> and they ask they interview them after they're done skating they ask the stupidest questions the most inane questions they're like why do you think you fell <laughs> why do I think I fell gee I, I think I might have fallen because it was so damn slippery yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but it was like a sheet of ice out there. They really ought to do something about that. Maybe throw down some rock salt, because somebody's going to get hurt, mark my words. And they're like, uh, why do you think you fell? Why do you think you fell? And then they say, uh, what were you thinking when you fell? What were you thinking? What was going through your mind when you fell? What was I thinking? Gee, that's a good question. At first, I wasn't even thinking. I was more trying to climb out from under an avalanche of lost hopes and broken dreams. <laughs> But then I thought to myself, hey, bright side of things, maybe I can trade in this bronze medal for my childhood. <laughs> Why do they advertise milk? Who are they targeting with this campaign? People unaware of milk? People sitting at home oblivious to this drink, just watching those commercials, just mesmerized, going, oh yeah. Oh, that would go good with a cookie. M milk, you say? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Is it Milka? It's not a silent K. I just don't want to make an ass out of myself when I order it tonight. <laughs> or maybe they're at breakfast. They're all bummed up. Oh, God, this Rice Krispies is so dry. If only there was some sort of beverage I could pour over it, kind of moisten it up. I tried Dr. Pepper. It was almost too effervescent. The snap crackle was deafening, and the pop, kapow. <laughs> oh, milk. I'm going to try that with a cookie. I love cookies. I'm an adult but I love cookies. And it's hard to be you know, into cookies because you can't get it at a restaurant. You know what I mean? Hey, I hope you saved room for dessert. Well, I hope you've got some cookies. <laughs> you can't do it. It's an embarrassing thing. The, the best cookie. I love this cookie. And it's just taken, it's gone from here, great to like greatest, like classic, the Oreo cookie. The Oreo cookie, are you goddamn right, Clap? Are you fucking kidding me? What they have done in the past five years with the Oreo cookie, the double stuff, wow. Wow, mint Oreo, I'm eating an Oreo, it feels like I'm brushing my teeth. 
Peanut butter in the middle of an Oreo cookie? Peanut butter? Wow, wow, that's so cocky, because it's like they're saying a nutter butter, we got it, we got it, we know what we're doing, we're Oreo, I think we know how to do cookies. But we admire what you did with the peanut-shaped cookie, that's cute. But we're Oreo. They have one with chocolate fudge in the middle of an Oreo cookie, wow. Wow, that's delicious and a little scary, because it's like, Oreo, have you been reading my diary? That's been a fantasy of mine for a long, long time, Oreo. And for you to make it happen, well, God bless you. God bless you, Oreo cookie. Newtons, Newtons have surprised everybody, I think. Newtons have really come on in the past several years with some good stuff. They used to be obsessed with figs. They were obsessed, all they did with figs. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't recognize a fig if it walked right in there right now. I don't know what a fig looks like outside of a Newton. But some guy took over there and he took it to the next level. He had a vision and he just gathered everybody up. He says, you know what? Anything we can grind up and shove inside a Newton, let's do it. Uh, cranberry kiwi, sir? Fuck yes. I said anything. Cranberry kiwi is a subset of anything. Put it in there. Pepperidge Farm? Mm, really? Pepperidge Farm? Really, there's a farm? There's a Pepperidge Farm, some guy. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to till the Milano fields. <laughs> really? Milano, I love the names of them. Milano, Geneva, Bordeaux. Pepperidge Farm, come on. I bought you a Target. <laughs> Stop flossing me, Pepperidge Farm. You're next to the goldfish, for crying out loud. That's where you made your money. Goldfish, don't Brussels Bordeaux me, Pepperidge Farm. Oh, uh, worst cookie? Sugar cookie. Ugh, how do you even call yourself a cookie <laughs> if all you're offering is sugar? We're the cookie with sugar in us, what? <laughs> Let me tell you something, sugar, sugar cookie is it? Yeah, uh, last Halloween, last Halloween, Oreo, Oreo had orange filling. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Trick or treat, I feel that's a treat. But you're gonna stick with sugar. All right, let me tell you something, sugar cookie. Just so you know this, every cookie is a sugar cookie. <laughs> a cookie without sugar is a cracker. <laughs> According to my senior thesis entitled, Every Cookie is a Sugar Cookie, a Cookie Without Sugar is a Cracker, <laughs> by Gary Gullman. <laughs> no, I, that's what's funny. I studied uh, zoology, let's say. And I just, I wish I did. I love animals. I watch all the Animal Planet shows. I, you ever see this animal, the walrus? Oh my God, is that the ugliest animal you've ever seen? It looks like something God built last minute. You know what I mean? Because it has like flippers, tusks, a mustache. A mustache on a sea mammal? God must have been up very, very late that night. He's just like, uh... This is due tomorrow? <laughs> Can I just do a greatest hits or something? Can I do a best of God or something like that? It's because I'm exhausted. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll put together some other animals that I've already made. I'll put together the uh, seal, the elephant, and Burt Reynolds. <laughs> The coolest animal, but it's extinct, and I, oh, I wish we had him now, the woolly mammoth. That is a great looking, a big furry elephant with the tusks and everything. That is a great looking animal, oh my God. But do we really need the woolly at this point? In 2003, are people gonna be confused if you just say you saw a mammoth? I saw a mammoth, mammoth, <laughs> it's a little vague. What uh, type of mammoth? Oh, the woolly, yes, the woolly. I, uh, <laughs> That is a majestic beast. I thought you were talking about the corduroy mammoth, which of course <laughs> died out a long time ago because the hunters could always hear it coming. <laughs> it's a good job. It's a good job. I used to work at Starbucks. I, used to work, I got fired for being sarcastic to a customer. <laughs> Whatever. The guy was mad because I wasn't making his latte fast enough. So he got very angry at me, and he says, uh, he, he says, forget about the coffee. I don't even want the coffee anymore. Just give me my bread back. Just give me my bread back. <laughs> your bread? <laughs> so did you just ask for your bread back? <laughs> so why, why the rush? What do you do back in 1974? 
what, what do you got, foreigner tickets? Is that what's going on tonight? You seen the Doobie Brothers with foreigner and a double bill? Is that what's going on? What if I don't give you your bread back? What happens then? What are you going to do then? Call the fuzz? And I, you're going to call Starsky and or Hutch on me, sir? Seriously, what are you going to go home? Are you going to tape uh, Circus of the Stars? Is that what's going on tonight, sir? Oh, that's right. You don't have a VCR. Where you come from, they cost $10,000. That's, that's a lot of bread, isn't it, sir? I know. Thanks very much, everyone. I had a great time. Good night. Thank you. How was it out there tonight? Uh, it was hot. Yeah. It was a little sweaty, but it was fun. The crowd was very nice and, and clappy and nice and fun. Uh, is it really different to being on, say, le the talk shows, the late night talk shows? Uh, different energy? A little bit, because um, I can see all the faces and stuff, so they're really close to the... Uh, hey, buddy. So they're really close to the uh, uh, stage. Joe Millionaire. Joe Millionaire. 